awesome. When you have money to buy that new iPhone, you're like, yeah, got the money for it. Awesome, you don't have to charge it, it's a great feeling. Cut back spending and cut out impulse purchases. Check your bank accounts. You wanna see where your money's going. When I worked at the branch on the drag, all the time, especially during the beginning of the school year, parents would come in and be like, I deposited a thousand dollars. Where'd the money go? It was gone in a month. <laughs> Cafe Medici, Chipotle, just adds up. So just check your bank accounts, um, just track your spending. Convert it to a visual amount, make a list. However you stay organized, just make sure you see it every day. Rents due, car payments due, insurance is due. Nickname your savings accounts. This helped me a lot because I'm a visual learner. So if you're saving for a new iPad, if you're saving to go to Europe to study abroad, make it somehow visual that you can see every single day and you're more um, more likely to save money for that and less likely to take money out of that account because you're like oh, man but i really want to go to europe next year do i need this hundred bucks probably shouldn't take it out leave your plastic at home don't carry your debit and credit card around with you it just makes it that much easier emergency fund is an essential expense you really want to have six months of your income and expenses saved. So sometimes people make more money, that's great, than their expenses. Sometimes people have more expenses than they make an in income. Whatever is the greater, you need to have six months of that in your emergency fund. I'm not saying you have to do it right now, of course, but this is a good, you know, graduation tip maybe, but you just want to have some type of emergency fund, even $100 right now. Any little thing, life happens. Mm -hmm. an ideal emergency fund I mean as a graduated adult you want to have the six months because especially new elections coming you don't know what's going to happen with the economy <laughs> I'm scared as a new homeowner um, life happens I mean honestly the littlest things vet bills slash tires a car accident you, I could just go on and on but all these things where I was like man if only I had saved like a hundred dollars more. Um, right now I would say try to keep like 500 to a thousand dollars as a just in case. That's just a good starting point. This one is also huge. Now that I have a lot of friends who have graduated, they're still paying student loans off. They get raises every few years and they go out and buy all kinds of stuff. My friend just bought a Z28, like what is it? A Copo Camaro, just real nice. He's a realtor, so he thinks, I'm making all kinds of money, I can afford it. He has nothing to show for it other than stuff. He bought a house, which is a great investment, but he has nothing to show for it. If he were to lose his job or the Austin housing market were to take, were to take a dive, he has nothing to show for it. Don't save your credit and debit card info like on Amazon. It just makes it that much easier to spend. Keep it deleted. If you've memorized your card number, Get a new one. <laughs> um, set up automatic transfers. So when your $500 stipend goes in, automatically set up 25 bucks even, 20 bucks. Just set it up to go into your savings account so you don't see it. It's just out of sight, out of mind. Oh, and the important thing I missed, one that you can't access. So don't have your savings account, have a savings account linked to your checking, of course, if you overdraw but also have a savings account completely separate from your checking. I have mine at Ally Bank, um, just so I can't, I don't have a debit card to it. It's just when my paycheck comes in, money goes into it, I don't see it. Um, switch to a cash envelope system. You guys may, may have heard of the Dave Ramsey system. He's a strict, only pay cash for everything. Um, it does help because cash has an emotional connection to people. So if they have that $20 bill in their hand, they're less likely to spend it versus just swiping the plastic. Write it down or use a budgeting app. I really, really love um, mint.com. It is free. I check it every single day and it tells you what your net asset or your net worth is compared to how much debt you have. Makes recommendations and it gives you alerts right on your phone. It'll say, hey, you've already gone 50 bucks over your coffee budget, stop spending money. <laughs> Establish a 401k. So when you start a job, most employers will say, hey, here's your retirement benefit. We'll match up to 5%. It's free money. So literally, if you're saving $5, they'll match a certain percentage of that. 
I wish that I had set mine up right out of college. I didn't set mine up until I was like 26, but it's free money. It's just as soon as you have that option with an employer, set it up. When you start to make more money, increase your contributions. Again, free money. Unsubscribe from your favorite store's emails. <laughs> this one's huge because again, you're gonna get suckered into, oh man, there's a deal, I need to go, 40% off. Don't need it. You have to stop and think, do I really need something from this store? Is it a coupon on toilet paper or is it a coupon on a cat iPhone case or something? Um, just This saved me a lot from getting, not only a bunch of spam, but just every day I'd get a coupon and I'm like, oh, there's a deal at West Elm, I have to go get something. Um, and again, only coupon for essentials. Toilet paper, razor, shampoo. These are just some of the few obstacles um, to creating a budget. It is hard sometimes to sit down and think, man, what do I wanna save for? What are my expenses? The biggest one I can tell you here, knowing what I know now, is the sacrifice piece of it. People don't wanna miss out on going to happy hour for their friend's birthday. There's ways to just save money without spending it. You can go, just have water. Have the chips and salsa. <laughs> No shame. Have, yeah, have a PB&J before you go and you're like, uh, instead of saying like, I don't have money or I'm trying to save money, which is a good thing, but instead of having to say, I don't have the money for it, just, oh, I'm not hungry. I had a PB&J before. <laughs> um, but the biggest thing I can tell you is you do have to make those sacrifices. Get creative. Again, however, whatever's gonna encourage you to save money, make a vision board. If you wanna go to Europe, put a huge picture on your fridge. Put it as your phone background, your desktop, to where you see it every single day. Keeping track of it. Just this example alone, calculated, let me get to that page. <clears throat> this list is just a standard from someone living in Austin. Rent, thousand bucks a month to live by yourself. It's pretty common. All of this, you would have to be making at least $35,000 a year just to pay this. That's how much just the bare necessities will cost you. So having that extra money to pay student loans or paying more on it or traveling, things like that. This is the bare necessities. But the biggest thing is just write it down. Every single expense. This is just an example of a chart. Um, some people are more chart spreadsheet people. Um, I'm more just the creative vision board, just a basic list, but some people like to see the short term and the long term. What are you saving for immediately? New set of tires, whatever it may be. What's your midterm and what's your long term goal? Every dollar counts. And this is just another example. Sometimes people like pie charts. A lot of your banks will give you a tool to where you can track it in the form of a pie chart. It's just easier to see. Um, expense everything. The biggest thing I can tell you on this too is expense your savings money before you start spending it. So you get your check, you pay your bills, always set aside money for savings before you think, oh, I have 300 bucks left over, so that's my breakfast taco money. Um, always set aside money for savings, even if it's 50 bucks, 20 bucks, set aside money. Make the sacrifices and you'll get big wins. Do you guys have any questions? Yes. Uh, so say that you're, uh, you've accumulated a bunch of debt by your life, but of course life happens, right? So you're gonna, you're gonna die eventually. So all that debt that you've accumulated, once you pass away, who does that debt belong to? That's a good question. So he asked, let's say over, I'm 30 years old, let's say I pass away tomorrow. Sad, sad thought, but it happens. Um, who does your debt get left to? If you're married, especially in a community property state, which means if you get married in Texas, Arizona, California, automatically half goes to the spouse. When you pass away, all of your debt gets left to your spouse. Um, it happens on, <laughs> she's already thinking of a way, she's like, oh man. <laughs> it happens, but honestly it is, um, I can tell you, um, last year, unfortunately, I did experience a family loss. Having life insurance is crucial. 
So you can pay, you know, 20, 30 bucks a month. A lot of employers will offer it. My employer offers it. You can have a policy of $150,000 just in case something happens and it's like 20, 30 bucks a month, if that. Um, if your employer offers it, sign up for it because honestly, it's crucial. I was thankfully able to buy my house and put a full 20% down, which in Austin, that's about 60 grand. Plus your closing costs, plus all the moving costs, washer, dryer, every little thing. Um, I will tell you, have that life insurance because it will get left to your family or spouse. Um, you don't want that to happen. Yes? If what? Oh, if you sign a prenup, man, I don't know if you can do that in Texas. I have no idea. I'm sure there's ways around it, but in a community property state, it's automatically half. <laughs> Any about that, maybe think about your dating. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, back there. Easy, folks. We still have a couple of minutes, and you want to get to questions. Oh yes. Let me um, let me go to the beginning. Yeah. If you guys want to email me questions, email's usually better for me right now because I am in the mortgage world and it's insane. Um, UFCU was actually just ranked number one mortgage lender in Austin. Huge. <laughs> We actually, yeah, it's awesome. We are currently, um, we're beating out Wells Fargo, B of A, Chase. We're doing like $100 million a month in new loans. So I am pretty busy. Feel free to email me and I'll usually.